we'll turn it over to Tank so we can start having fun and talk about how we're going to take and go get an invasive largemouth bass, or they call it the bucket mouth. There's all kinds of names, okay, that we, we've known for. So Tank, the floor is yours, and thank you for sharing and coming on. All right, good evening, guys. Uh, my name is Tank. Uh, garbage truck or salt cart was taken, so I had to go with Tank. Uh, no, it's just a nickname from the, uh, as Jim said, the Marine Corps. I was in the Marine Corps for uh, five years. Did uh, four years, got out, got involuntarily recalled. Uh, I was stationed in Quanco, the MP. Um, grew up fishing. Um, I can remember being on the water ever since I was knee high to a duck, right? My grandfather took me, my mom took me, my dad took me. Uh, any chance I got to get out on the water out there, right? On the, on the water or in the woods. Um, hell, I mean, I remember taking a flat bottom boat in the back of my truck my entire senior year, and I would fish before school, get out of school, and go back to fishing, right? So um, I'm just ate up with it. I love it. Um, I love instructing. Um, love uh, just teaching and training. We're going to get into some stuff today, which is my favorite topic since uh, springtime bass fishing. Uh, what I did is I kind of assembled like some scenarios and um, what my perfect setups would be. So what we're going to talk about is, again, Potomac River springtime fishing, the scenario, right? It's a warming trend, which I'm praying for, right? We're going to get this weekend. Um, three days in the mid to high 50s, water temp is 44 or above at the ramp when you drop in. I pray to God that it's 44 on Saturday when I drop in. Uh, and last week in the snowstorm on Tuesday, it was 41.8 out on the river, right? And there's magic numbers when you talk about water temperature, right? Think about your bathtub water. If it's too cold, you get right out. If it's nice and warm, you kind of just relax and chill out, right? But as soon as you get out from being warm and relaxing, you might you might get ready to eat. It's the same thing with the bass, right? Like Jim said, they are smart, but sometimes they're not too hard to figure out, especially this time of year, because they're coming out of winter. All they're thinking about is eating and getting ready to do their thing, okay? And when I mean thing, I mean, you know, with the ladies, right? The lady fish, <coughs> and then and they, get, they get pretty easy to catch, all right? So what we're going to talk about is if we had this scenario, what rods and reels, okay, we would take out and we would go seek out after these fish. And like Jim said, and it's funny that you mention it, you guys have access to a pier right here uh, in Pohick Bay. It's amazing because I take my boat, launch it at Lisevania, no matter how cold it is, how hard it's raining or how hard the wind's blowing, I run the Pohick Bay and I fish the grass that he was talking about, right? So I have to travel my boat about 20 minutes to get to this grass bed. You guys have it at your access, right? All you do is walk out on the spirit they built, it's real nice. And what we talk about today, you're gonna be able to go out there and catch fish with, okay? So, Jim talked about some bait casters, um, some spinning reels, uh, he threw out some names that I saw a couple guys like, what is he talking about? <laughs> Carolina rig and wacky and all this stuff. It's stuff you guys are gonna pick up throughout the course of these classes, right? If you have a question about, hey, what is a Carolina rig, just say, you know, raise your hand, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss it, uh, but I promise you we'll cover it down the road, okay? So, I brought a couple of my rods. Now, hey, Tank. Yeah. Just to make sure you guys stay awake, there could be a series of questions, <laughs> all right, that Tank may ask. And I got two crankbaits here that's Excalibur. They are not made anymore. I used to have about 20 of them. I'm getting down to about maybe five now. But whoever answers certain questions correctly, Tank, you feel free to pass them out. Drop shot. I'm gonna one. Uh -huh. I'm gonna one up Jim. Okay. I got a bunch of baits from several of my sponsors and some stuff that I've collected um, over the past year. Uh, one of the companies that uh, I do a little bit of work for, Potomac Mix Tackle, is baits that basically specialize for the river. Meaning 
I'll call up my buddy that owns this company and say, hey, you need to make a bait that's three inches long, got big flappers, right? So I could do this, this, and this with it. And a week later, he'll say, here you go. All right, so some of these baits is, is exactly that. So what I'm gonna do, throughout the course of the night, I'm gonna give you guys some baits, okay? Um, I got uh, four daughters. Three of them, before I came, took um, my business cards, okay? And they got to randomly select any pack that they want. Okay, if you happen to get one of those business cards, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take you out on a fishing trip. Okay, we'll set up some time, a good date that works for everybody, and we'll go out and go fishing. All right? So, again, Jim's gonna give away some crankbaits. I'm gonna give away. Uh, somebody might get some pink frogs. Okay. Don't laugh, man. It works. Bubble gum or pink? I'm telling you. Blood, the the ladies works. love the pink. So I'm gonna tell you. Okay. Um, so, again, we're going to give some baits away, but we're going to talk about springtime fishing. My favorite topic, right? If it could stay spring all time, all year, I'd be in heaven, right? Not the spring like Monday where it was spring and snow and six inches, but like sunny and 62 or 63 degrees, I could live with that, right? So, um, so again, the scenario, it's been warming up for three days. In the 50s, your water temperature, when you drop the boat in, is 44 degrees. All right? Again, we talked about that magic number. Last week was 41.8. On the river, I see 44. I'm like, oh, boy. Okay? 44 and above, it's chew time. All right? Fish are going to be eating. All right? They've moved up from deeper water, okay, onto the flats. So on the river, the channels, 20, 25 feet deep, they kind of hang out there throughout the winter. All right? They move up into the flats, so the shallows, right? If you come into a creek like Pohe Creek, you literally could walk across that entire creek. All right, the water would never get above your neck. Most most places in Pohe uh, po Creek is like four feet deep, believe it or not. All right, as far as you can throw your line out, where it lands is probably four feet deep. All right, so they're coming out of the river channel, which is 20, 25 feet. They come up into the creek, and it's four feet. That's a flat. All right? So when I say they come up onto the flat and they're ready to eat, that's what they're doing, okay? So, I'm instantly thinking I gotta find a flat, all right, that potentially has grass on it, all right, that's, uh, that it sets up to being close to um, a deep water spot, okay? So here's the reason why I'm looking for a flat next to deep water, all right? If we have one of these crazy Virginia nights, Right, and it drops down into the 20s, and your water, to, your water temperature cools off a little bit, guess where they're gonna go? They're gonna go deep. Just as fast as they move up onto the flat, they get cold, they're like, uh-oh, bathtub water is too cold, gotta get out. They're going into the deep water, okay? So I'm looking for uh, a flat that has deep water nearby, all right? And as soon as I pull up onto that flat, and I see where it's coming up, right? It's coming from 25, and it's coming up to four feet, I'm gonna stop my boat in 25 feet of water and I'm gonna start fishing the edge of that flat, okay? And I'm just gonna work my way on, all right? But some of the baits I'm gonna use to fish that flat, all right? Baits we're gonna talk about are mostly reaction baits, okay? Yes? So when you're fishing that flat, are you fishing it like, is it high tide now? Is it going to low tide? Because some, uh, I talked to someone before and it said like, it's, you know, it goes from high tide to low tide, they're mostly gonna hang out in the middle of the channel. So he just he just do a monkey wrench. Yeah. Right? I pulled up onto the flat, but now we have a tide. Right? Because right? we're on a tidal body of water. Yeah. Okay? Um, tide affects all the fish. Okay. Um, and we'll probably get into that in further classes, but just to answer your question, I'm gonna practice on different tides to see if they bite better on either an outgoing or an incoming, which it always seems to be the case, right? The weekend that I'm practicing, they bite awesome. The weekend of my tournament, it's opposite. <laughs> they don't bite, all right? Uh, the tide affects them. Tide is definitely affects them. Not so much in the springtime, in my honest opinion, um, because again, they just come out of deep water. If, you're, if your weather stays stable, all they're thinking about is eating and getting fat, right? They're eating and getting fat to go do their thing with the ladies, <laughs> all right? Yeah. Um, so, like last week, last Tuesday when I was out, 
Um, it was snowing. The water was super cold. Uh, it was below 44, so I wasn't too, uh, you know, I was a little skeptical, right? But I was more just looking around, practicing. Um, Jim talked about practicing. Uh, my wife now understands why I practice. But when I say, hey, I'm going to practice, basically, I'm taking all those variables and going out and seeing what has it changed, right? Has the tide changed something? Has the sun or the clouds changed something? Has the water color, right? All this snow melt off as it runs into the river and it changes the color of the water, that's a variable, right? So I'm going out to practice to check all those variables. Does that make sense? Um, so again, the baits we're going to talk about today are reaction baits, my favorite, okay? Meaning you're never really standing still. You're constantly moving, chucking and winding, right? You're not watching paint dry. When I say paint dry, if you slow down and you flip a bait out there and you're kind of just dragging it, I call that watching the paint dry. I hate it, right? It's very, very slow. That's those, those old timers ways of fishing, right, Jim? That's right. All right, I love chucking the line and constantly moving. So reaction baits, okay, like this. This is called a chatterbait. Okay, if you notice, it has a lip here, okay, a blade, all right. It has a weighted head and a big hook on the back of it, okay. What this bait does, as it comes through the water, that blade is shimmying side to side. So what it's doing is coming through the water like this. What do you think that's making? It's making noise, because it's clapping side <coughs> to side, right? If you have a good chatterbait, the old school original chatterbait, it'll clap side to side, it'll make a little tick, 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 tick. But that right there is vibration, right? And fish have lateral lines and they feel that vibration, right? So it's like, I feel something coming. It's coming from behind me. And as soon as it passes my head, Right? It got past me, wham, I eat it. That's the reaction bite. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. And this is one of the best baits to get a good reaction bite. All right? Another good reason why you want to throw this in the springtime, why do you guys think you want to throw this in the springtime? Remember I said I'm constantly chucking and winding, right? I'm covering a lot of water. Right? So think about, think about this room as my flat. Okay? I just pulled up my boats in deep water. I can see the edge of the flat, all right? I'm gonna start fishing, all right? So literally, I'm on the front of my boat and I cast here, right? And then I cast here, and then I cast here, and then I cast here, okay? I just covered that much water in four casts. You got me? Okay, so I move my boat up a little bit and I do the same thing, okay? So now I'm going deeper onto the flat, all right? So within 20 minutes, I can cover this whole room. Okay, because I'm throwing a reaction bait. I'm throwing something that's constantly moving. All right? But if I throw the old man worm, and I'm dragging it, okay, and I flip it out there, and I'm dragging it, okay, it's going to take me forever to cover this room, my flat. All right? So that's why we're throwing reaction baits. Now, all the baits that I'm going to show you guys can literally be purchased at Walmart, Dick's, anywhere close to here. Right? So you don't have to go, like, you don't have to go online, I mean you can, but you don't have to go somewhere special to buy these baits. They sell a chatterbait at Walmart. Things like $4.99. It's the most exciting bait and bite you'll ever get. Okay? Because you'll throw this thing out and you'll wind it. And when you're winding it, your rod tip is doing this the whole time. Okay? It's just shaking because that bait is vibrating. And you can see it on your rod tip. Alright? And when that, when that fish bites it, your rod tip goes that, it goes slack, or it goes limp, okay? It just stops. And then you know it's time to set the hook, okay? You're gonna throw this on braid. Jim talked about the difference between, or he, he mentioned braid and monofilament and fluorocarbon, okay? Braid is basically, think of it as a steel cable, okay? It's got no stretch, okay? where monofilament is like your old school fishing line. It's got stretch in it, okay? So with stretch, you're not gonna get as good of a hook set or penetration in the fish's mouth, right? That's a pretty big hook, okay? 
fish's mouths, depending on where you set the hook, might have to come through bone, right? Unless you get them right in the corner of the mouth, it's not as hard. But if they if they eat it like this, and you have to come through the top of their lip, you need to get a good hard uh, hook set or penetration. That's why you want to throw it on braid. There's no stretch. Okay. Another reason you want to throw it on braid around grass. Remember, remember, that's what we're targeting on the Potomac River in the springtime is grass. Okay. Not like the grass we cut when it is springtime, but there's uh, there's hydrilla and milfoil, right? And if you're in four feet of water, it might be two and a half feet or three feet tall, okay? And basically what's happened, this bait is coming across that grass and Big Mouth Larry is sitting down there, right? And he feels it because it's coming up. He's like, uh oh, I feel something. I'm about, to, I'm about to get a meal, right? And he eats it, okay? Not only are you getting a good hook set, but to get it to Larry, if you get caught in the grass and you pop your rod tip, it'll free that bait out of the grass, okay? So think about it like this. We throw our bait out there, okay? And here's some grass, right? And it's coming through the grass and it hits the top of the grass. If you pop your rod tip, the bait's just gonna go, and it's gonna free itself from the grass, okay? Where if you throw it on monofilament or fluorocarbon or something like that, you may not get the popping action of that bait. It may just pull it through the grass. You guys with me? Right? So if we pop it, that's going to create that re reaction strike. He's like, oh, I felt something. Where's he at? And as soon as that thing pops out, that bass is going to eat it. But if you just pull it real slow through the grass, he may still feel it. He may not be as interested. Okay? And a lot of times, ration bites, they eat it just because. <laughs> right? They're greedy, okay? It's just a reaction bite. That's it. My wife walks past me with a T-bone steak, I'm gonna eat it. She leaves it in the refrigerator or the microwave, eh, I get home, I might warm it up, I might go eat it, who knows? But if she walks by me with a sizzling hot steak, I'm not letting her get past me. I'll tackle her and bite her leg off to get to that steak, right? That's how bass are, okay? Uh, so, chatterbait. Okay. If there's one bait out of the five or six I'm going to show you, I promise you this will be the most fun. Okay, because the bites are so vicious, they're so fun. Okay, you can throw this thing a country mile, right? Uh, and you can really, you can really watch your rod to indicate when a fish bites this. Either two things are going to happen: you're going to be stuck in grass, and your rod tip's going to stop moving or there's gonna be a big fish on the end of your line, okay? And remember, again, when you reel that thing, it's looking just like that, right? So I'm sitting here, I'm reeling, and my rod tip the whole time is going, okay? Oh it's so much fun, right? And as soon as you hit grass, it'll stop. Or if a fish eats it, it'll stop. So you do two things, you either pop it, because it's on grass, and after, I'd say about 20, 25 times of throwing a chatterbait, you can automatically feel the difference between grass and a bass bite. Okay? It's really one of the easiest things to just pick up and throw. Okay? Um, to go back to your question about the spinner reels and the bait casters, okay? Spinner reels, like Jim said, finesse fish, light line, I think like six or eight pounds. It's very light to us. Okay? When there's a tournament and there's money on the line, um, think about having the best tools. Think about getting the fish to the boat as fast as possible, right? So I got a winch. I got a winch on the front of my boat. I want to get that fish to my boat as fast as possible. If I put yarn on my winch, I'm going to be a little bit pucker factor, right? When I set the hook and I'm fighting that fish to the boat. But if I got braid and I'm just cranking on him and I'm winching him to the boat, he's coming to the boat. Okay? So. With the spinning reel, we're going to put finesse line, 6, 8, 10, maybe the highest 12, maybe 15, okay? But when we talk about bait casting reels, we're talking about braid, which is, this is 30 pound braid, okay? Uh, but even when we start talking about some of the monofilaments and fluorocarbon that we use, you're going to hear us talk about like 14 to 20 to even 25, okay? So you get bigger line on your winch, okay? And you can use yarn or thread on your spinner wheels, right? Um, 
So, next bit we're going to talk about, okay, is a rattle trap. So, what this bait does, and again, we're going to throw this bait on the braid, right? Because remember, we're fishing around grass. We want to be able to pop our rod tip and free that bait out of the grass, okay? So, again, if you go down to the pier, out here in Poe, and you take a rattle trap with you and you take a chatter bait, I promise you, you're going to catch fish, okay? It's going to take longer for you to set your reel up to be able to cast it than it is longer to take you to catch the fish on, right? Um, but a rattle trap, okay? It's basically a crankbait, a crankbait without a lip, okay? And we're going to talk about some crankbaits here in a few minutes, so you guys will see the difference. But it has no lip, okay? This thing is free falling. So when we throw it out there, if I count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, that's how far it's falling in the water, okay? So if I count 1,001 and I start reeling my reel, it's it's falling one foot, and you're reeling it back to the boat, okay? If I count to three Mississippi, then it's falling three feet and I'm reeling it back to the boat. Okay, so if on my flat, I know that there's four feet of water and the grass is a foot high, how long do I have to count my bait down? Two. Hmm? Two. It's four feet. Four feet. Your grass is one foot tall. You're gonna count it down to three to be right at the tip of the grass, right? You want this, again, just like your chatter bait, right at the tops of the grass, okay? Most most rattle traps run nose down, okay? So as you're reeling this back to your boat, it's coming just like this, or back to the bank or back to the pier. It's running just like this. When you hit some grass, what are we gonna do? Pop our rod tip, just like that. Your rod's in your hand, just pop, and what's it gonna do? It's gonna go, it's just gonna shoot off the grass. And old Big Mouth Larry, when it pops it off the grass, what are we gonna get? We're gonna get a reaction bite. Okay? Remember, he feels it. Because the whole time you've been reeling it back to the boat, it's going, it's just, it's shimmying all the way back, right? So he feels that. Right? It's got rattles. Okay? So all that noise, all that vibration, all the words it's putting off. Okay? He feels it. It's coming. He's sitting down there underneath the grass and he's looking, right? Because he feels something. And as it comes to that grass and it gets hung up and you pop the rod tip and she shoots free, you're going to get a reaction strike. Okay? Now, again, this is called a rattle trap. Again, it's another bait you can buy down at Walmart or Dick's, anywhere the local posting here. Okay? Now, they come in different sizes. Okay? Sizes are very important. And any of the baits that we throw, we just have to pay attention to the water depth we're going to be fishing in. Okay? To match the size of the bait to the water depth. Okay? How do you find out? Each package, okay? Again, we're going to talk about some crankbaits that have the lips here in a few minutes. But most packages, except for the one Jim's going to give away. <laughs> All right, he's, he's wrote it on here because it, it, it came off, but 8 to 10 foot, okay? And the, and the biggest way you're going to tell that, okay, look at the lip. See the plastic lip there? See how much bigger that one is? See how much smaller this one is, okay? That's your difference between how deep they dive. Big lip, think about a big lip, it's just gonna make it go down, okay? A smaller lip, not so much, okay? But most packages have how deep they dive, okay? So were you asking how, do you know how deep the water is? Both. Okay, both, okay. Uh, in a, in a shark. Huh. I'm gonna just change those. Uh, unlike my boat, Jim's boat, we have uh, GPS units that show how deep the water is. They show us what's on the bottom, whether it's hard or soft, or patches of grass. Uh, you know, there's, we're in 2014, they have what we call side engine, right? So my unit on my boat scans down and out to the left and to the right, okay? So if there's a tree 25 yards to the right of my boat as I'm driving in a straight line, I have to look at my GPS unit, which looks like a laptop, mounted to my boat, okay? And it'll show me that tree off to the right. But it shows me the depth and how far it is from my boat, okay? You may not, uh, 
have that type of equipment, but you can use your baits to tell you how deep they are. Remember we said count down, right? So if you're down there at the pier and you're fishing, and you throw this bait down, and you count 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, up, it's hung up in the grass, how deep is it? Three, three feet, right? Because you count it down to three 1,000s, right? So you can use your baits to actually tell you how deep the water is, okay? Uh, but you look at the packaging, okay? Look at the weight. You know, if you're fishing in three feet, five feet, you don't want to throw an ounce bait because it's going to sink super fast, right? So you use like a quarter ounce bait or uh, a three eighths ounce bait, okay? And then all the sizes are on the packaging. All right, um, but again, so this is one of my favorite things to do on the river. You guys couldn't tell by this box, okay? So that's all rattle traps. So again, different sizes, okay? That's a one ounce. This is a quarter. This one's not gonna sink as fast as that guy, okay? So again, yeah, your water depth does determine which bait you want to use. But you can use your baits to determine how deep you're fishing. Makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So again, quarter ounce. And oh, trust me, Big Mouth Larry, he's gonna eat this bait the exact same way he eats the big bait, all right? Um, you may, your hookup ratio may not be as great because it's a smaller bait, a little bit smaller hooks, right? Then one of the bigger baits that has bigger hooks, okay? But that fish is still gonna eat the bait the same way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So just different sizes, different shapes, okay? Different colors, all right? We'll talk real quick about colors, right? Uh, the, the line again? The, the line is braid, braid. right? That particular uh, braid is uh, called Power Pro, all right? There's 50 gazillion different braid companies, right? Um, I like Power Pro. I've been using it forever. I trust in it. Power Pro you can buy down at Walmart. Again, it's 30 pound braid. And again, on the box it says what pound it is. It'll start at five pound and it'll go up all the way up to 100 pounds, right? The thing with braid is you get the strength, but the same diameter as a smaller line. So the 30 pound braid is the same diameter as a six or uh, six or eight pound monofilament, okay? But again, remember, steel cable. It's as strong as a st steel cable, but it's, it's, very, uh, it's very small diameter, okay? So remember how we talked about the spinner reel being finessey, right, with smaller line? One of the main reasons why is, see how small that spool is, okay? If you put 20 pound line on here, remember Jim said when you open the bail, the line may shoot out. It happens with small diameter line, okay? But if you try to take really big diameter line and wrap around this tiny little spool, guess what's gonna happen the first time you open the bail? It's gonna right? spring It's gonna spring out. You're gonna have a mess. You're gonna take the whole round and you'll just throw it in the water. <laughs> All right? Um, but, okay, here's, here's a little trick. You can put braid on this, okay? And I just answered why. Does anybody know why you put braid on this? Because it's a smaller diameter. Bam, my man. Pay attention, okay? It's a smaller diameter. So you get a 30 pound braid and it's the same diameter as a six pound line, okay? And if you look, if you go purchase a rod and a reel on here, it recommends Eight pound line, you can get 200 yards. 10 pound line, you get 107 yards. So you don't get as much yardage with the bigger your line. But it doesn't recommend anything over 10 pounds, right? It stops at 10 pounds. Because if you open that bale, it's just gonna jump off, okay? See right on the rear work? Eight, so eight, 200 yards, 10, 107. Again, if you find, if you find that, um, the braid, that's a small <coughs> diameter, all right? 30 pound braid is the same diameter as eight pound line. You know you can get 200 yards of 30 pound braid on here and not have to worry about it jumping off. Okay. Plus braid sits better on the spool, right? It's not as springy, 
right? So it sits better on spinner rails, okay? Um, and one thing that I recommend, I do it, not a lot of people do it. Um, I'm trying to convince Jim into doing it, but on my spinner reels for tournament season, those real tiny baits, I put them all on spinner rods with brake, okay? Spinning rod does in as the actual pole? Yep. Uh -oh. So I'll put 30 pound braid on my spinner reel and I'll tie my little itty bitty rattle trap on here. Two things it does, okay? One, I feel like I get a little bit better action out of this with a spinner reel, okay? I can work with a little bit easier because it's a smaller bait and I don't move the rod as much. But another thing too is when I put braid on here, trying to throw this into the wind is much easier with this than it would be on a spinning uh, bait caster. Okay, one of these guys. Okay, and that will come with time. If you guys do anything that you take away from this class, you, if you get you a, a bait caster reel and you try it, right, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Right, Jim talked about the professional overrun. You try to throw a small bait into 20, 20 mile an hour wind, you're gonna get a professional overrun. With these and, and braid, you won't get that, all right? Because the line's coming off the reel as opposed to trying to get it to get it to come off the reel with a bait catch. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so again, that's probably one of my best tips I can give you, uh, especially fishing a pohick around the grass, okay? Get a small rattle trap, okay? It's a 30 pound braid or even 20 pound braid, a spinner rod, and you will catch them, all right? Another thing we do, so right now we're in March. Um, it's gonna be a beautiful weekend this weekend. There's gonna be a gazillion boats on the river, okay? And as soon as the weather breaks, there'll be 10 gazillion boats, right? Because all the fair weather fishermen will come out on the river. Um, and every flat on the river, is gonna see a thousand of these. Every day, all right, until the middle of April, even into May, okay? So, if they constantly see this one, and they're like, uh-uh, I'm not falling for that again. I knew what happened the last time I did that, right? We, like Jim talked about bone finesse, right? Giving a smaller profile bait, right? It makes the fit, it, we call it feeding the fish, making them bite, okay? Um, so if they're not eating this, all right, you change the colors, you change it out, the ones that rattle, the ones that don't rattle in this same size, if you go down to a smaller size, you may pick up a few extra fish, okay? And throughout the course of this class, this year, you guys are gonna hear like downsizing, okay? Going from a six inch worm to a four inch worm when the fishing gets tough. Okay, that's, I relate that to, like Jim was talking about in the stripper pits, fishing with worms and not getting bit and going on bank and catching grasshoppers, right? I relate that to the same thing, downsizing or going finesse, okay? So, when you're downsizing, are you just looking for smaller fish or are they just more desperate? Or? No, I'm just, I'm looking for more bites. The the more bites you get, the better average you have of but fish. They're, they're gonna bite the smaller ones more than the bigger ones. Because. I've caught more big fish on the river with a downsizing yeah. than the big baits. I mean, I'm just looking, I'm looking for uh, an increased number of bites, right? Because if I get into a populated area like that, upon that flat where there's a bunch of fish, okay? And I have a bunch of my competitors around me, and we're all running our troll motors that move our boat around, okay? And maybe the tide's going out, so the water's dropping a little bit, okay? Those troll motors over those fish's heads spook them and get them kind of jittery and, and nervous. When you start downsizing stuff like that, one, remember we talked about fall rate and how the bait sinks straight down, right? This bait is gonna fall a lot slower than this bait. So when you start losing water because the tide's going out, you can keep this bait above that grass. Much better than you can keep this bait. 
All right? Everybody's tracking? All right? So again, tide, how it affects it. You start downsizing, this bait's a lot lighter, it'll stay above that grass. All right? And that's the ticket. We want it in the grass, but we don't want it balled up with grass. Right? If I throw this guy, you're just gonna get balls of grass every time, right? Because he's sent straight down into the middle of the grass bed. You pull on it, it's a big ball of grass. This guy's gonna sink down to the tops of the grass and you you be able to fish this effectively. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, but no, I mean, I start my, I, when I start my year out, I always have one tied on. Because it's gonna produce just as many big bites uh, as the big bait. But again, you kind of are hurting yourself because again, the smaller hooks, right? And when they eat, the way they do in the springtime, sometimes they're so aggressive, you'll feel them, you'll get to the point where you'll feel them like, oh, he didn't eat it. He just ran it as hard as he can, okay? He missed it. He was so overly aggressive, he knocked it out of the way, okay? And that stuff you'll feel, like literally, when you start catching fish on a flat, uh, a grass flat, you'll know when he when he ate it really good, because he's not, sl he not slacking your line, and you got to real, real fast to catch up to him, or you get the fish back to the boat and it's in the side of his face because he just swiped at it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, my favorite is always when it's down here, right? Because he ate it good, he's hooked good, he's coming to the boat. Okay. Um, so rattle traps, chatter baits. Okay. Uh, let's just go back to the chatter bait for two minutes. We're going to talk about the way it comes in the package. Okay. It comes minus the fancy blades that's um, under the skirt. We call that black and blue thing the skirt, right? Because you can think about it. If I remove this, he's naked. Right? Very simple. I told you we're going to keep it simple. Put his skirt back on, he's got his skirt on, right? Or she, however you call it. Both is not even. <laughs> um, but we're going to dress him up, right? we got a trailer. The opportunities with trailers are endless. Whatever you want to do, literally you can put any piece of plastic as a trailer, right? I've chosen this one to one to just make the profile a little bit bigger, okay? Because remember, it's March. They're eating real good. They haven't seen a bait in a couple months. They're looking for anything that's coming by. They're going to eat it, right? So I'm going to make a big, bulky profile, okay? Now, again, in a month after they've seen 5,000 chatterbaits, we may have to downsize, okay? Or might just change things up a little bit. So we may take this one that I got here as a trailer, and we may do something like this. Y'all hold that, don't let Jim see you see how we did? Instead of putting something that resembled a fish, now he's got pinchers, looking like a crawfish, okay? Just be careful, he's got a hook on there. But see how we changed the entire profile of that bait? It went from being slender and long to now it's kind of short and compact, okay? So just by adding a piece of plastic to the back, our trailer, we've changed that entire look of that bait, okay? So, that's what I'm gonna to talk to you guys about with the chatterbait. Again, the skirt, right? You'll have several different colors. If you're gonna to go to Walmart and buy two chatterbaits, because Tank said go buy chatterbaits, this is the only colors you need. Black and blue, white and chartreuse. Chatter? Chatterbait, okay? And the way you know you're buying a good one, at Walmart, the package will say original chatterbait, but also on the blade it says, See where it says original chatterbait? Okay. There's many knockoffs. I've used customized ones. I've built them myself. I just feel like they don't make the same noise. Mm -hmm. Alright, they don't do the same thing. See how it says it on there? Okay, again, $4.99 at Walmart. We want to buy the original chatterbait because when it's coming through the water, that blade is slacking that head just like that. And it's making a noise. Okay. And again, that noise, that vibration, is what's going to shed the air. Okay. 
Again, Jim's passing around an entire slew of chatterbaits. Um, so chatterbaits and rattlebaits, they're all they're both going for a reaction bite. Yes. Now on on the chatterbait, you know, we're talking about different sizes on the and the rattlebait, you know, different sizes can affect how far they sink down. And the chatterbait, does the same thing apply? Same thing applies. Okay, so it might, you might want to go with the smaller one or one with like the, the tail. So the, the sizes I recommend, quarter ounce and three eighths. So again, you're going to go to Walmart, you're going to buy four baits, buy a black and blue quarter ounce, buy a black and blue three eighths, buy a quarter ounce white chartreuse, and buy a three eighths white chartreuse. Again, when your tide gets out and you're what happens when the tide goes out, all right, it's sucking the water out of the river. Your one foot grass in the three feet of water now starts going like this, right? Your grass never moves, but your water level goes down, okay? So the opportunity between the top of the grass and your water column starts shrinking, okay? So, Jim, can you run my chatterbait for me? So here's the top of my grass, okay? The box is the top of my grass, okay? We're in four feet of water, okay? Springtime, your grass is, is just blooming, basically. It's just starting to grow. It's getting enough sun penetration through the water to make it grow. Uh, it's nice and green. It's standing straight up, right? It's this high. It's one foot off the bottom, maybe a foot and a half, okay? You're in four feet of water. Here comes our chatterbait. Okay? Fish have all that room to react to it, right? But as the tide starts going out, you now only have that much room. Okay? It's a lot easier, again, to get this 3 8 ounce heavier chatterbait stuck in all the grass. Okay? Then what do we want to do? Go down to a quarter ounce, right? Because it's much easier to get that quarter ounce up in the water column above the grass. Okay? hitting the, tip, the tops of it. And when we hit the top of it, what are we gonna do? You pop your rod tip, right? And it's just gonna, it's gonna make that bait shoot up like this. And when it shoots up like that, that's when you're gonna get your reaction bite. So again, different sizes. It, it's, it calls, I mean, different measures, right? When your tide's going out. Now what about the reverse? What about when your tide comes in? You're gaining, okay. you're gaining water. That's right. Okay, so you went from this high, your tide's all the way out. You only got that much water between your water column and the top of your grass, but now your tide's coming in. So your water's raising up. You got it? Okay. And we do have a lesson called tidal strategies. All right, and how to fish a tidal water. That's a really fun one, because that one talks about burning out all the gas in your boat, or moving around, <laughs> right? Because you're chasing the tide. That's a really good one. Um, but again, same thing with the rattle trap. Okay? Remember, a water column that either shrinks, right, or grows. Okay? We're going to either upgrade or downgrade. Okay? It's all dependent on the time. And guess what? Everybody's into 2014. We all have iPhones. We got some kind of droid system phone, right? There's charts. Potomac River tides. Okay? You put in Pohick and it'll tell you exactly what the tide's doing. Okay? It'll show you the swing. Okay? It'll show you at 10 o'clock on Saturday, your tide will be doing this. It'll either be going out and how much time you have until it's dead low, or it'll tell you that it's coming in and how much time you have until it's dead high. Typical tide swing is six hours. Six hours, 15 minutes. You know, from high to low, low to high. A tide will taking shift or will flush, okay, every seven days. The tide will be reoccurring today, 14 days from now, it'll be the same as it is today. These are all things to keep in mind. But like our charts, okay, our electronics, sonar and GPSs, we have it on there. Or you can go to uh, the tides, type that in and pick your day and you find it that way.
And if you guys can't tell that I'm obsessed with battle trap fishing, okay. please don't hook yourself, but I want to give you guys each one of these, okay? These are just, these are red eye sheds. Uh, they're not the quarters, but these will be really good on a high tide when the grass is just starting, okay? You tie that on some braid on uh, either a spinning rod or big casting rod, you go down to that pier down there. All right, as soon as you hit grass, just do this when you first cast. Throw it out, look around, okay? Kind of look, at, look up, all right, sing a song, whatever, and then just start reeling, okay? If you hit grass on that first cast, you're in business. If you don't, spin around, cast it out, sing a song, reel it in. If you don't hit grass, keep moving around till you hit the grass, okay? If you hit grass on that first cast, then cast it out again, count down. One and down, reel. Cast it out. One and down, two and down, start reeling. That's how you're gonna find out how deep that grass is, okay? And once you get it, all right, I know I gotta count it down to three one thousands, and I'm hitting that grass, you're in business. As soon as you feel it load up, just pop that rod tip, okay? And you're fishing the grass, all right? You're fishing for springtime bass on the Potomac River, okay? Um, so, see, I could do this all night. <laughs> you can't call me about work. If you guys want to call me about fishing, we can talk some fishing. I love this. Uh, all right, so rattle traps. We're going to talk about another crankbait, okay? I think I got 10 minutes to cover two or three more items, okay? This is the very famous Baby Ones Minus, man's Baby One Minus, okay? The one minus means it dives one foot, okay? That's why your lip is so tiny. So basically, you throw it out there, as soon as you start cranking, it's gonna dive to one foot, and it's just gonna start doing this, okay? This is a, this is a, anybody know what the KISS method is? Keep it simple. Keep it simple, stupid, right? <laughs> this is the KISS bait, right? This is the bait I tie on for my wife, my kids, anybody I take out fishing, to catch just numbers, to throw it out there, reel it in, and catch fish, the man's baby one minus. Again, you bought a bar, you bought a dicks, any tackle store has baby one minus. Okay? It's got rattles. Okay? Dives one foot. Alright? So whether you're your tides up and you got two or three feet above the grass, alright, or you got that small window, small window above the grass, this bait does it all, right? It's not gonna dive all the way down to the grass but it's gonna trap those fish out to come get you a bite, okay? Um, again, to bait and tie on, I throw it on 12 pound uh, monofilament, okay? When the grass is really thick, I'll go up to 14 pound monofilament because it's, it's really sentimental to me and I don't wanna lose it, all right? Um, but again, throw it on bait caster, 12 pound monofilament. Throw it out there, put your rod tip down, reel it in, your rod tip's gonna do this. When it stops doing that, you gotta fish. Okay? It's really that easy. But this is a numbers bait. All right? I've had, I had two of these baits before. This is a very old painted baby one minus, like one of the originals. Okay? That color pattern. I had one of these. I went into my favorite creek, Chickamauxon Creek on the river. In the springtime, it was perfect, like 70 degrees. The water was warming really quickly. Fish were getting very active. I caught so many fish that day on this bait that the last fish I caught on the bait broke it in half. Okay, I caught so many that they basically ate through the epoxy and got to the walls of the bait, made it really weak, and I caught a fish and it broke in half. Okay, but it's a numbers bait. It's a kiss bait, it's very, very easy. Okay, man's baby one minus, remember the small lip, okay? And real quick, looking at crankbaits, okay? They're like women with purses, all right? I'm infatuated with them. I can never have enough of them because they all do different things. Three different crankbaits, okay? They one minus, small lip, one foot. Balsa, made out of balsa wood, very, very light. Careful, how light that bait is. 
okay? So it, it floats very, very well. All right, when you stop it, when you retrieve it, when you retrieve it, it dives down, and it's running how deep it runs. When you stop retrieving it, it's gonna float back up. But it's gonna float back up pretty quick. Retrieving that really Yep. If you retrieve it and it's diving down, okay, and you stop it, it's just gonna float right back up to the surface. And you start reeling and it'll dive back down again. Okay? But again, we're looking at the different lips and the different styles of crankbait. Okay? See how that one is not as square as that one? See how both of those are not as small? Right? This one runs a different depth. Again, I'm looking at my package to see how deep they run. Okay? If I know I'm going to be fishing off that pier and it's four feet of water, I don't want to go out and buy one that has a lip this big. Right. All you're going to do is dredge the bottom. Right? But if I get one that runs three feet, I know at max high tide, I can throw this bait and it's probably going to tip just the tops of the grass early in the spring. But as we get later into the year, what's going to happen? The grass is going to grow. Okay? We're going to talk about that in further classes, about how we attack that when the grass gets higher. And eventually, in June, July, August, you're going to see the grass. It's going to be at the top of the water, right? And that's a whole different style of fishing, right? Frog fishing, top water baits. They're really, really fun stuff, okay? But again, the crankbaits, different lips. I even brought one. So here's your traditional, right, lip, more rounded, okay? And then you got a square bill. Square bill is intended to be able to fish it through cover. Trees that are laying down off the side of the bank, around docks, rocks, whatever. The square bill, when it hits something, it makes it deflect off so it doesn't get hung up, right? Where this one, what's it's gonna wanna do? It's gonna wanna hit and then roll over it. And what do you think is gonna happen when you roll over a limb? It's gonna get hung, exactly, right? So again, depending on what you're fishing, you need different styles of lips. Okay. But again, around the grass, and as long as it's not dredging the bottom, you can do the same with both of these. Okay, it's once you get around the cover, the down trees, the rocks, whatever the case may be. And that is all along the Pohick bed. There's trees, there's rocks, there's everything. So even if you went down walking the bank and you fish lay downs, you want to make sure you have the appropriate stuff. Okay. Um, so we talked about chatterbaits, we talked about rattle traps, we talked about the baby one minus, okay? Um, two more things, how much time do I have? Okay. Um, the last thing I wanna talk about, right? This is my absolute favorite thing to do, okay? It's about four years Wait, ago. Have they all signed an NDA? Yeah. <laughs> Non-disclosure agreement? We can't give all of our secrets away now. You got, you, know, you got to swear to us now. <laughs> About four years ago, um, I caught some of the biggest bags I've ever caught. Right, and when we say bags, in terms, in terms, is a five fish limit, whether it's individual or a part. Right, Jim and I fish a part uh, tournament together. We're allowed to bring five fish in. Okay, and at the end of the day, you weigh those five fish. Okay, so if somebody says, oh, "I brought in ten pounds," you're like, "Good job." Right, you caught five two pounders. Right, some days that's very good. Most days on the river, like next weekend when I have a tournament, ten pounds will get you laughed at. Okay, ten pounds won't. You know, it'll be at the very bottom. Okay. Four years ago, I was catching bags, five fish that were 23, 24, 25 pounds. Okay, so a five pound average. Right on this bait right here. Okay, it's a swim jig, okay? <clears throat> I think in later some of the classes we'll talk more about regular jigs. Um, jigs are intended to be fished very slow, right? The old man watching the paint dry type stuff. Um, in fact, you did that at Anna, right? Watch the paint dry? Good deal. He caught 22 pounds watching the paint dry, right? Um, and yeah, I'll be old one day. <laughs> but this is intended to chuck them on. Okay, so think about our chatterbait, we cast it out, we reel it in, it's vibrating, right? It's making all kind of commotion. This is kind of like the, the silent killer, all right? This is getting thrown out, swam through the water column, and it sneaks up on 
right? And right when it gets past his head, he sees it, he eats it. That reaction strike, okay? You're gonna put off a little bit of vibration depending on what trailer you use on the back of it, right? But if you had to guess, what would that resemble? A mermaid? <laughs> no, look, think of a little fish. What'd you say you were catching earlier? Panfish, right? Oh, yeah. Bluegill? Bluegill. Okay. So, as I'm chucking and winding this, bass are eating this because they think it's a bluegill. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or if I put a different, if I put that trailer on that has the pinchers and I change the color up, you may think it's a crawfish running through the water. Okay. But again, this is a chuck and wind, all right? It's a springtime, we're covering a lot of water. All right, I'm gonna throw this on, early in the year, I throw it on 12 pound four carbon. And again, braid is our steel cable. Monofilament has some stretch, like the old school, right? And then fluorocarbon has come along and kind of uh, evolutionized the fishing world, where it's kind of like the happy medium. It's almost a steel cable, but it's got just a little bit of stretch. Okay, so it's like in the middle. Um, and we want to make sure we throw this on floor carpet so we get a good hook set. All right, we get that penetration. The fish bites it. All right, we can penetrate the hook through the top of his head, through that, uh, like that jawbone that's real tough on the top of their head. It's going to come all the way out and he's not going to get off. Okay? So again, this is called a swim jig. All right? Um, the variations that you can do are endless. You can put crawfish trailer on there, you can put the bluegill or the uh, the swim bait trailer on there, all right? But it's to resemble bluegill or any type of fish that's in that area, all right? And that's why they're eating. So once you guys master the chatterbait bite, okay, you want to go to a swim jig, all right, because it's not putting off as much vibration. So it's kind of like downsizing from your chatterbait, okay? Because again, the chatterbait's got a lot of vibration. This guy doesn't. He has a little bit from his tail, but he, this is the sneak attack. Okay, so think of it that way. And again, uh, we want to throw it on floor carbon. If you don't have floor carbon, you can't throw it on brake. All right. Most swim jigs, you want to stay with the floor carbon because they have a light, light hook. Come ahead, bud. Yeah. All right. You see how thin it is, mm -hmm. right? You saw the gaff that's on this chatterbait, right? right? Looks like a gaff back there. It's on braid, we're not worried about it bending out. If we were to throw this on braid, okay, we have a really, really big fish, the chances of bending that hook straight and that fish coming off are pretty good. Okay, that's why we wanted to throw it on four carbon. It's got a little bit of stretch. It's not on that steel cable, we're not bending out our hook. Does that make sense? Okay, but again, once you master that chatterbait, all right, once you master the rattle trap bite, okay? The reason you want to master those is because when you throw this jig, all right, there's like three different ways the bite is going to feel. It's going to feel real mushy, it's kind of like you're hung up in the grass, and that's because he's got it down here and he's swimming off with it. Or he's going to run up behind it, open his mouth, suck it in, and keep running at your boat or to the bank, and it's going to feel like nothing's there, okay? or you're gonna feel just a little tick. Kind of like a panfish would, would peck at something. You'll feel a little tick. And that's just because he ran up behind it, ate it, and touched it just enough to tick your line, and now he's running away from your boat, okay? And when you start throwing this, and you feel those three bites, you're gonna be like, oh man, the tank was dead on with that. Because that's exactly how it feels, all right? The tick, the mush, or the nothing's there. I love that nothing's there because they're running to you at the boat and usually that's a really, really big one. Okay, so any questions? I know we covered a lot. I know we've talked about Carolina rigs and flick shakes and pink worms and all that stuff. Um, for springtime fish, remember three things. Chatterbait, rattle trap, okay? Those both on braid, all right? Pick a rod that suits you, a rod and a rig.